1987 wasn't the easiest year for him. Last March, he lost his world championship to the Canadian Brian Orser. But instead of being bitter, he seems to have matured from the experience. The world championships came up in 1987, and I thought, God, you know, I'm going to die if I don't win this title back again. And I didn't, and my life didn't change. I realized that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're first or second or fifth or eighth. The important thing to me, and not, not only me, but my coach, is that I'm able to be a good person out of it. And I think that's really what the 1987 championships meant to me. And I'm thankful for it. I'm a happier person being second in the world. An awful lot of attention has been focused on Brian's quadruple jump. He's landed it many times in practice, four revolutions in the air, but nobody's ever completed a quad in competition, including Brian, after several attempts. Finally got to the point that he was, was, thought he was getting frustrated. It seemed that the media people were concentrating only on the quad rather than on the complete skater. So this year he's concentrated on his choreography. No quad, and the program is beautiful. My program as a whole, I, I just put everything into order. I said, this is the most without the quad it is the most technically difficult program that anybody is going to show and it's very artistic it's well done everything seems right in gear what in the heck are you trying this it's like packing bricks on your shoulders and trying to skate a long program so the bricks are gone brian is free to explore a new direction and as he discovered after the short program he seems to be pointed straight ahead and on the right road and now here is Brian preparing for his long program in military dress and again there's a reason there's a story Dick right this is a story of a soldier all aspects of a soldier a very romantic romantic and lyrical quality in the middle of it I think it's a soldier who is both tragic romantic innocent and an idealist Difficult combination, a triple axle, double toe. Three and a half revolutions. Uh, oh. And a fall on that, a fall off of it. Brian's music is from the TV miniseries Napoleon and Josephine. He said the first time he heard the music, he knew it was for him.
in the Olympics behind the American gold medalist Scotty Hamilton. But he's a different skater now than he was then. Bad, second bad moment here. Second bad one. It's not his night. Christopher Bowman. Here we have the champ making two, would you call them major mistakes? They certainly were very bad mistakes. They weren't complete folds, which call for a mandatory mark down by the judges, uh, but they certainly were not helpful. I think one of the important things that we have to realize is that the program choreographically was very good. It just doesn't show well when the technique falls apart, like here in this triple axle. Now look, good revolution there but he just can't hold it at the end and drops off. And when you have a failure in the technique, the choreography suffers. And on this triple loop, which is very difficult from this back outside edge with no toe pick or support, it's a real tough one. You know, I think he went off in the very first jump. You can see that the triple lutz was not the usual clean, slick move that it was. I think that gave an indication to where he was going. Here are the marks for technical merit. Look, they're all five nines. Now, if you consider that those are a mark against perfection, they're not really justified. But if you consider that they're a mark in comparison to Paul Wiley, who was also technically very good but made major mistakes, then these marks reflect the fact that the judges want to place him in front of Paul Wiley, i.e. first and instead of second place. And remember, the marks aren't the specific point that they are, but the placement value, and that's what counts. And I think in that sense, uh, one can justify those marks. The artistic impression about to come up here, it is composition and style. These marks, five nines, uh, six there from judge number seven. Now, remember, choreography doesn't show off to its best when it's not technically well performed. And I certainly think in that case, the six might be a little bit over optimistic. Okay, so he has made his effort. Let's go down to David right now with him. Brian, all week long you were concerned about the altitude. Do you think that had any effect on, on the performance? I don't think so. I think when I got out there, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. What really had more to affect the performance is that the short program was such a peak in my whole career that I got the feeling that nobody around would be settled for anything but 6 O's. That put a lot of pressure. So in respect, I was worried about the altitude, but I didn't think I could do a 6-0 performance in, in the altitude. And it was like getting to a real peak in the short program and then being really let down. And then the next night having to do a whole long. And it's been a really hard week for me, a lot of pressure. Will we expect any changes for Calgary? No, no changes, except to land all the jumps cleanly. Are you ready for Brian Arthur? I think so. I don't really think about him. I think about myself, and I'm ready to challenge myself. This really wasn't my challenge. My challenge is in a month, and that's when I want to be at my peak. When we come